What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Can We Talk? This is your boy, Eric. I'm here with the usual suspects, Shayna and Anthony. What's hey, how's it going? Y'all, today is a special episode. It is a special episode. The Us Review episode. The Us Movie Review and Interpretations at the Table. Yes. So, spoiler alert. You know, just want to throw true. that out there. Yeah, spoiler alert last week. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, if y'all listening y'all haven't seen the movie yet, first off, go see the movie. And then kind of turn this off and come see us next week. Because this is going to be a spoiler, but it's going to be good. Um, and we're also, if we have time, delve into like the history of black horror. Mm-hmm. If we have time. Might be a part two. So do y'all do first so we're gonna do summary, then first impressions? Well So I think we should do like so like summary, like not of the whole entire plot, but like just mm-hmm. like what the film is about. Um then we can go into like, you know, tone, narrative, performance, and then then we go mm-hmm. into our personal like first impressions. Since you are a movie critic, you probably get the best summary. You can surmise this in a in a good way. Okay. I mean, I can try my best. You got this. I don't know what to <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically the bare bones plot of us is that um us follows um a family um that goes um goes camping in the woods and meet up with their um I believe it's their college friends. Yeah. Well they never said, but I, I assume. Yeah, but just um uh, another couple. But basically it's about this family. They run into um their evil doppelgangers and basically they're the whole film is them trying to escape them and trying to figure out where they come from, why do they look like them, and their doppelgangers are like slurred of speech. Um, it's only the um, the wife that mirrors the the wife mirrors self. I guess we'll call her that for now. Mm-hmm. That actually has like speaks like full English, but everyone else speaks in grumbles and grunts. Um, they have an evil look about them. They're uh, they think like them, look like them, know them. Yeah, so it's basically trying to figure out where they come from and how to stop them and basically what's going on. Yeah. What were y'all first first impressions? For me, my first impression of the movie was that it's a solid movie. I truly enjoyed the acting, especially uh, Lupita. She did an amazing job. She did. I think that she, uh, again, so to be able to do two characters in one movie, you know, that always takes a lot of hard work, a lot of skill, a lot of talent. She did, a, she did an amazing job of sort of showing... Um, the character and emotions from both both of the characters. And I think this, the plot overall, it had a few holes that I kind of pointed out, we pointed out in the group text, <laughs> but I liked it. It was, It's entertaining. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a well-done horror film. I, I, I do like the way that um, that Jordan Peele near um, his pace and everything. I like Lupita's uh, performance. I like that she was able to give a crazy performance like that and still keep you engaged and not have it be on the side of, like, comical. But like mm. you're really like, like being with this woman, like man, what is going on? Yeah, I like the comic relief part though. That was that's some, <laughs> some some of it. Some, some of, of was it good. was corny. Some I of, did, yeah. but I did like overall. I did enjoy the film. Yeah. Um, I did like like Lupita. Like everybody had like their double characters, but she had the only like a, like full other mm. character. And I think she like she did really really good with both characters. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed her performance. Mm. Yeah, I like the film, just overall. Yeah, I think the film, in, to- in its totality, I think it did a great job of, of hitting some some social points mm-hmm. that necess- that you don't necessarily have to, to look at or examine, but I think if, if you're just sort of analyzing it, there are some connections that you just kind of see that to our, our current culture. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like the mechanics of the film, I think that Jordan Peele, he, he's an amazing you know director. His mind is, is amazing. I'm just I'm curious, like as to why he kind of thought of this concept. Like, what was his inspiration in this concept? Well, he um I think he touched in that touched on that in an interview where he um he spoke on like the whole thing versus the um the normal people versus the tethered. He looked at it as you know part of his inspiration. I think it was his inspiration, but he said like during the whole 2016 election, yeah. it was like left versus right for real. It was yeah. Democrat versus Republican for real at the main front of the whole battle. Mm. So he looked at it ha- as after Trump was elected, everybody looked at each other with distrustful looks. Like, mm. you know, how do I know he didn't vote for Trump? How do I know that he was a Clinton supporter? How do I know this and that, <laughs> this and that? You know what I mean? Like, it was it was a whole lot of distrust going there and looking at other people like they were quote unquote the tethered. Yeah. So he said that was that. that was an inspiration for him. I think. Randy, did you get to see the movie yet? No. Oh, oh, sorry, Randy. You gonna ruin this whole whole thing? I already thing told him before you. he came in, man. He <laughs> said, "If you need to step out, you know what I mean. It's all good." I didn't. Re- I didn't think ab- about the whole sort of political aspect of it. Like, yeah. what if the tethered people 
represent the silent majority that they said, like, you know, the the deep red states. Because think about it, they wore red. They could right, be perceived right. as, as being, like... I thought that, this is my interpretation, like, that the tether, they, re- like, they represented, like, quote-unquote, like, the 99%. And then the people that they were quote unquote tethered to represented like the one. And then you had the one character who like switched and now mm-hmm. she's like, Oh hell no. Nah. Like this ain't right. Like when, yeah. when you're in that like type of position and then you fall from that position and now when then you're um with like the other people, now you can advocate from a, a certain standpoint that you couldn't advocate mm-hmm. from before. Yeah, I heard something similar. Someone said that the whole movie talked about or discussed poverty. Mm-hmm. They're saying how um, Lupita's Adel- Adeline, Adeline, mm-hmm. who was who the uh, the well, as we know, she switched places, but who was the untethered? She was living in a privileged uh, middle class like uh, uh, sort of lifestyle, whereas their friends, the white couple, were sort of like the upper class, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. they were always like, oh, he has the nice boat, they have the nice house, whereas those who are tethered are the poor lower class individuals, and so they're saying how. The white couple, they didn't fight back because they were kind of comfortable and complacent, complacent with their life, whereas the middle class, they, they were forced to fight. Um, and then the the tethered people, they had to fight to survive, right? Just sort of like poor people, if you have to fight every day to survive. Mm-hmm. That was good. I mean, that was a good analogy. I mean, it's kind of reaching, but... Well, here's the thing it. about this movie. I mean, any interpretation you have, it's not reaching because... Mm-hmm. Like, you really could say anything and you would be right in a way. Because, yeah. like, it's just... it's It's more about... One versus the other. It's about one versus two. You know what I mean? Mm. Like somebody could say, like this is like like maybe the tether or like Americans and Canadians on our top, because like 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 because you look at the way I think our country looks to other countries. I know we look unusual. We look violent. We look mm. like we're in tense times. That's how the tethered look to the normal people. Yeah. I mean, I feel like any interpretation isn't really reaching. It could be right. That's also kind of like a good and a bad thing for the movie. Yeah, because. It's not limited interpretation. It's not focused limited interpretation like, and I don't want to compare this to Get Out, but Get Out had like a focused limited interpretation to mm-hmm. it, whereas this film is more open ended. Yeah, I would like to go and touch on each character, like each of the main characters, um, and sort of the role that they play, and mm-hmm. and sort of like try to draw some connections in terms of the significance of their role. So the husband, who was a Gabe, yeah, Gabe. All right, Gabe's character. I know y'all weak. clown. I know y'all clown. <laughs> this is weak as fuck. I know y'all clown the dad jokes, but I feel like with the kind of character he was, like the warm dad, yeah. it made sense why he made the dad but jokes. My like, I didn't. That he is my one. His character is my one complaint because it was like times where it was like completely serious, hmm. and he had a fucking joke. Like, yeah. like we we serious right now, like. Can't, why can't you just be serious? And then he was weak as hell. All <laughs> early on, he got hit in the leg. I like, love. he just wasn't rational. Yeah. Like, just throughout the film, and that irritated me. I think I liked it, though, because I liked it because they allowed the, the woman to be the lead of this, right? Because a lot of times you think, oh, the man is going to be the protector, the provider, but the story isn't about the man, right? It's about Adeline and, and Red. I think that's what they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's about sort of her journey to switching between the tethered and the untethered life. Mm-hmm. And it was fitting. Like, he was just there to provide a little bit of background support. You know, he did actually kill more people <laughs> yeah, when in the movie. Yeah, when they did the kill right. count. <laughs> we did the kill count. So he did. He did. He wasn't that weak, right? It right. was just he wasn't supposed to get all the shine. Yeah. I mean, one one thing <laughs> where I think his his dad humor did work is when they were watching, like, um, the news report of where the guy was saying everything, like, oh, they're violent, they're this, they're that, and he says, yeah, yeah and they look like us. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one thing they missed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, it breaks up the, it, it breaks up a little bit and adds something, another element to it, which I kind of like. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with, you know, putting the female lead in charge of the narrative. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, you don't have to lessen the dad's power because of it, you know what I mean? But I understand, what? like, the motivation whenever, behind it. And whenever you have movies like that, that's what they do. Like, that movie Breaking mm-hmm. In. Like, he got popped on site. Like, yeah. And, you know, Gabrielle Union was a strong woman, protector of the children. And when he came up, they would pop, beat yeah. his ass. Like, <sighs> it's good for a narrative point of view, but it's like it's been overdone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm with that. I understand, but I just feel that his, he wasn't, 
it, it was still important. He played he played an important role. That was kind of neat. It was necessary. Like he did. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was this like this joking guy, this, the corny jokes and all all and, and all that. Yes, I understand that. But I think that he did do more than people kind of give him credit for. Like he he kept him. I mean, he he killed people. He's he protected them to an extent. It was just not his story to be told, right? I think the son is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, the son was an interesting character. What was this? Oh, Jason. Mm-hmm. He was, and I heard some theories that the son was actually swished as well. Did y'all hear about that? Nah. No, I don't think so. Because the tether had like a messed up mouth and face, and you know, like. I, well, the theory I don't is that, that one. the theory is that that um, when they came up to the the woods or the cabin previously, he ended up getting switched, and that. Some somehow he was playing with matches or something that matches that he was playing with matches. He burned himself, and that's how his mouth got messed up. But again, that's a reach. Um, but his his character was one that the connection between the mother and the son in both the untethered world and the tethered world was very interesting. Mm-hmm. I like wow. that dynamic, and um, it was sort of like this extreme protectiveness yes. that you didn't see with the, the girl. Uh, that's what I was thinking in the movie. I'm like, she like, run. She told the girl to run. And then when she was saying, like, telling the boy to go with his doppelganger, she was like, no. Yeah. No, you can't go. You got to stay with me. Well, he, he is the younger sibling, though. He is the child of the family. So, I mean, like, I, I get it in terms of, like, their, like, narrative connection. Like, he's a little bit more other, like his mother. Mm-hmm. But, I mean... Or it could be a play on the, you know, the phrase that we... We spoil our sons and raise our daughters. Mm. Could be that too. Yeah, because there were instances where I'm like, "How you gonna let the girl just fend for herself?" Like, I mean, yes, she was old enough. She was what, probably like 13, 14. So yeah, she could theoretically fight for herself. But, um, I'm it. They just left her on her own. <laughs> like, 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 good luck. I don't know. My <laughs> <laughs> one thing they, I noticed too, they didn't really kill anybody other other than their own people. The tether did, because uh-huh. no, even when the um guy ran up to the daughter's doppelganger and said, "What the hell's going on?" Yeah. You know, she just cut him and he fell down. We didn't see her like kill him, you yeah. know. But with the scene where Elizabeth Moss and uh, Tim, I forgot his last name, but mm-hmm. um, their friends, you know, all their doppelgangers killed their, you know, physical yeah. human others. Thoughts about um, Adeline's character. I, I knew like five minutes in. Yeah, me too. I pointed <laughs> it out. I knew like five minutes in, and then when she couldn't catch the beat on, I got five on it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, this. She couldn't catch the beat. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I catch, she... she was trying to tell him to catch the beat, but she wasn't on beat either. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Well, and I told my mom. I that's told a reach. <laughs> right, yeah, that's gonna reach. I, I told think that's... my mom. I'm like, that's the fake bitch. She was <laughs> like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm like, I'm telling you. And she was like, and then when they started to, you know, get more into the story, and I was like, maybe she's not. And then yeah. when it, the little twist at the end, I was like, I told you, I told you. But I don't know. <laughs> if the, but the whole catching the bee thing, I don't know if that's a big issue. I think they just threw it in there just to. Be- that might just be Lapita's fault. Right, right. My thing is like, cause I was thinking like maybe he like because get out. Like, he wrote that, like, and it's easy for a black man to write a film like that from the black man's perspective. Mm. But I was like, either is it that he can't, like, is something missing from the black family? Or is that she just don't fit in? Mm. She just don't fit in. Yeah. Yeah, I think she just, yeah, I agree with that. Um yeah, I think I think she was a very interesting character. I like the way Lupita played both roles because mm-hmm. to me, I wanted to be fooled. You know right. what I mean? I look at, I looked at this film and I just like laid back and like didn't try to overthink anything and just tried to examine it later. So the, mm-hmm. the twist at the end, I said, okay, that's fair and that's fitting. Yeah. You know, and I, I liked how the the classroom scene when um, the tethered, who was really like really the physical other, was breaking down what happened and everything like that, and they tie back to her original story near the fireplace. Like mm-hmm. you know, there was this girl and there was a shadow. Um, what I, what I want to say about that is most people like, and this is this is something I read online that kind of fits. They say, well, if she's the physical other, then why does she talk slow like everyone else? Wouldn't she talk normally? But you gotta remember she, the physical other like choked her when she first brought her down there, so that probably yeah. like damaged her vo- vocal cords for some time. But also think she doesn't have anyone to talk to. Yeah, like she who else is she talk. communicating with if they're yeah. all if none of those people can speak? My yeah. biggest issue though was that she was there when she was a little girl. How is her vocabulary so good? <laughs> Think about it. She have a limited vo- vocabulary. Like she wouldn't be able to, you know, well, communicate they, as well. 
they move with time like the like the like the humans move with time. So of course, uh-huh. if they're gaining more vocabulary, she's gonna gain oh, more vocabulary. Oh, okay. So it's, she's li- literally learning with her as well. Okay, right. I ain't know was that. Well, how come know, the other there's ones some holes in it, man? But they're monsters, it's you know. A lot like, of holes. Yeah. Yeah, but but overall, again, I wasn't too fooled by the whole plot twist. I think um, when she went to therapy, and they were like, "Oh, she can't. She's not talking." I was like, "Yeah, yeah something something's up with that." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then when they were. Um, when she was uh, the two doppelgangers, the families met each other, and her ability to talk, I'm like, yeah, something's up with that as well. Like, how come no one else is talking but she can? And so there's a few things with that sort of made it more, I guess, uh, made me more aware that they were probably switched or something happened. But uh, you go ahead. No, I was going to say, before we get into the other characters, I was, I was going to say one scene that did have limited focus interpretation compared to the rest of the film was the ending as to whether mm-hmm. the son knows. Who you knows? You could know. you could argue that he knows, but you could also say like, well, he doesn't know, but he's skeptical. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I feel like either or works. Or he saw his mother do something totally out of character, like yeah. like yeah. he like really like it was that was a str- extremely violent scene. Because the scene where Lupita's character killed the twin, and the way Jason looked at her, he was like, something's not right. Yeah, the like, way she walked up to Jason, like, hey, hey, hey. yeah, you know, and then she kind of gained her speech, like, oh, it's okay now, it's okay. Right, he's like, she doesn't seem herself, and I think that was one of the, the, the giveaways. Hey, one uh, one thing somebody said in the, in the theater when she finally, like, you know, cracked the um the other's neck, one person was like, man, she dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, move on. <laughs> yeah, like it was an overkill. Like before that, they were like like killing. Like you know, to protect themselves, like killing to get away. Yeah, and that was just like an overkill. Yeah, I mean, but one of the issues I had was that this underworld, it had escalators and stuff. Like you can actually like, you can escape. So how was the little girl able to escape and not everyone else? That's what I was saying. Like, where's security? <laughs> like, why wouldn't like somebody be at the door? But like, you can't go out there. Yeah. Right. Like, why would there be like this portal, like an easy like? an easily accessible portal near a boardwalk. That's one of those things where you got to say it's for the sake of the story. It's for yeah. the sake of the story. I guess, I guess. Um, I mean, like, this was a really open-ended movie, you know, and I think that's both, like, wise on Jordan Peele's part, but also as a writer, it's like, eh, you, you do got to focus yourself to, like, okay, this could mean this or that, not yeah. this or that, or, like, a hundred other things. That's true. But I understand what he's doing, and I, I, I did admire that. Um, what do we think about the daughter? The daughter's character, and you can kind of tell from the, the tethered family when she said that she was happy she had her firstborn child, but mm-hmm. she turned out to be evil. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like she turned out to be like a very evil girl. Evil girl. Mm-hmm. Um, the relation I feel like the relationship between the mother and the daughter, even in the the actual real world, was always a little bit disconnected compared to. Um, the, the son, and we talked about that a little bit. So I think that the relationship was kind of just teenage angst. I guess though. it's I guess it's te- I guess it is teenage angst. But we, we was all there. Yeah, yeah, we were. Um, but overall, though, I think her character. I mean, she she did what she had to do. She was strong, you know. Um, she was able to. I, I like the car scene where she drove over <laughs> <laughs> over over yeah. a doppelganger and knocked her in the woods. Um, one thing too that got me questioning sort of relationship that Adeline had was when she killed the girl and the girl was like, her body was hanging in a tree. She kind of showed pity and remorse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe because, you know, she relates, right? She relates to this person. Cause it that, looks like her daughter. It looks like her daughter. Um, and maybe she understood, like, that could have been her. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you think? Who, me? Yeah, about the daughter. Um, I thought she was solid. I, I think, like, kind of like the dad, you know, she was kind of like one of the pieces to, like, fit the whole family puzzle mm-hmm. yeah. instead of making, like, Lupita just a single mom and just, like, one son. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I liked how it made it a complete family. I think her and her dad were, like, um, you know, they, they were characters to make the whole the whole piece. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. What was the, what was up with the four? Like, each family had four, like, four people in the family. Like, um... Lupita's family and then the the white couple they had it was for them for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think there's any significance with that? I think it could be um, kind of like um, 
I don't want to reach, man. I mean, it could be kind of like a like multiply multiples of eleven because you know, like Jeremiah eleven eleven. That's what you know, I was the thinking. The guy had that on his forehead, and uh, I'm gonna read that Bible quote later. I got it up here. Yeah, part of me was thinking that like maybe significance with that double that mm-hmm. that doubleness, you yeah, know, the, the doubleness, doubleness right. right? Yeah, it could be that. Um, what do we think of uh, Elizabeth Moss and uh, Tim characters? Uh, I keep forgetting how to pronounce Tim last name, but he's from Tim and Eric Awesome Show. It's on Adult Swim, the husband. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think their characters were that important to the overall movie. It could have been anyone else. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that it provided that sort of contrast of, of that American dream. Like, yeah. Gabe kept sort of comparing his life to, you know, Tim's. There's that, too. And, yeah. And there yeah. was, like little, like, little to no remorse or grieving. It wasn't. You're right. When their friends were murdered and they saw that their friends were murdered. Because I don't even think they're really friends. They yeah. were just. They could, yeah. Yeah, that, they were. Right. They were. They were acquaintances, but they weren't really friends. Right. Then you had the abnormal twins. I thought of the Shining when I thought about <laughs> for that for real? some crazy yeah. reason. For real. But, um, yeah. And, and then the fact too that um, again there was so much tension between Elizabeth Moth char- character and Tim that yeah. you can see like you know they didn't truly like love each other. They weren't <laughs> a loving family. They had everything in the world. They had the material stuff. But they didn't have any love or connection between the two. I gotta say, Elizabeth Moss, even when given a small role, she still shows nuance. Cause I love that scene where she's looking in the in the window and she's seeing her doppelganger husband get killed, yeah. and she goes from being sad to happy to like yeah. just a range of emotions. I thought that was an interesting scene. Yeah, that was deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did y'all think about the the rabbit, the rabbit connections? I know they ate the rabbits. Um, was it something deeper than that? Like, you know, you. For me, I thought of the analogy like, you know, down a rabbit hole. Yeah, and Alice going, in Wonderland. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah Alice, I read that too. Um, um, go ahead. No, I was going to say, is there something deeper to that? Do you think that it symbolized something or that was just kind of a part of the plot? Or? Only connection I can really make is that, like, um, there's a thing of cloning. So you saw, like, different rabbits in the mm-hmm. beginning during yeah. the opening credits. So there's that thing, and then I know, like, and I don't want to compare this to Get Out because they're two different movies, but mm-hmm. I know in Get Out, like, there was a song that played when um, Darius from Atlanta first got taken. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a song playing in the oh, car yeah, called Run, 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 Run. Run Rabbit mm-hmm. or something like that. So I think, like, that might be, like, a Jordan Peele universe thing. I'm telling you, I got a, that theory of the Get Out connection between this. I'm starting to believe it. Because they said, I was reading something, they were saying how um, the cloning experiment they, that they did with the original uh, families that it failed and so they moved on to just brain switching mm-hmm. as a mm-hmm. way to sort of control mm-hmm. i kind of think that's the, the truth think about it like it failed back in the 80s and they they just sort of left the people down there mm-hmm. um i guess it didn't fail in the 80s they, i guess well it failed at some point it failed at some point and so i think that the next variation of that was sort of switching our bodies mm-hmm. um and you kind of see so you could sort of see some of the connections vaguely again i don't want to reach too much but there are some parallels mm-hmm. i mean do you think that i'm i'm reaching or is it that's the thing <laughs> i like this movie is so open-ended anything yeah. you could say could be it that's what i'm yeah. saying yeah i guess i guess um i think it'll go down as a cult favorite though definitely the hands across america <laughs> thoughts about that the North States and the South States, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yep. Like, it, w- it was, you know, there's something you can draw from that, you know what I mean? Yep. The new times versus the old times, you know, like like um, like the Civil War kind of thing. Yep. Um, that was interesting. Was that a real campaign? It yes, was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it actually happened, but there were, of course, a lot of gaps. Yeah. And I heard, too, that um, they raised, I forgot how much money, they raised a ton of money but only half of the money that it had actually went to the cause. The rest of it sort of was just to pay people. Mm-hmm. And that's the significance of like the two, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. ha- the two the two halves. Like um I think that there was a situation where there's trying he's trying to tra- trying to draw parallels between like even with the song I got 5 on it. Like mm-hmm. in order to buy the Wii you got to have $10, right? Mm-hmm. So half and half. <laughs> <laughs> right, think think about this. It's no, a lot I of parallel. <laughs> yeah, right. Guess, so man. it costs ten dollars, right? That's a reach. And so you put five on it. <laughs> so it's like half. It's like this this juxtaposition between, you know, the two like dynamics, one and the other, like the up the up and the down, left and the right. Again, I'm reaching. <laughs> <laughs> But, it, but it, again, it's, it's so open-ended that you can interpret it any way that you want. Every which is, reach which is, is credible. It is. Every it is. reach is credible. It is. 
Um, and just like Hands Across America, this plot has holes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but first off, if all these, what it had to be three million. If it's if they cloned everyone, it had to be at least what three hundred million clones. <laughs> mm-hmm. How did y'all get scissors? How did y'all get red jumpsuits? Like, and who was watching them? Who was what? Who was right? Again, you for can't the, like do an experiment like that and then just leave. I think when it comes to like the other, like the monster of a horror film, it's like you could ask yourself a lot of things. Like how did um how did Jason stay alive? This how did Jason Voorhees stay alive this whole time? You know, it's just like yeah. it's that otherness. You know what I mean? So I gave like a pass to that. Like, eh, you know, they're the monsters of the film. I guess. I guess. Um, any other messages or any other thing that you uh, want to point out in a movie? I, I think I do want to point out the fact that the movie did a great job, um, in my mind, of highlighting a social issue that I think is important. And I think that on a personal level, level we kind of suppress who we truly are. Like, we kind of push our true selves to Down the bottom. To the, yeah, right? okay. And we kind of highlight parts of ourselves that are, are kind of fake mm-hmm. through social media. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I thought of like a social media comparison. Like, I thought that too. Yeah. Like the tether, there there are our real selves. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the people, the untethered, they are like our online personas. Think about we're tethered to our Yeah, our devices. to our phones, to our yeah. devices. Hey, here's one thing. Who was that <laughs> that um that the the son ran into in the um on the beach? The one that was like this in the trailer. You uh-huh. know, the one that the son oh, ran yeah. into. Yeah. Was that the Jeremiah eleven eleven guy? No, he died. He was in the amb- remember the ambulance. Nobody when they with were the, on te- the tether oh, version might of it. That, w- that might have been. That yeah. might have been him, even though he was in the ambulance. Okay, on right. the way to the beach. What is the Jeremiah eleven eleven? Uh, I was gonna get to that. <laughs> what is that? Um, therefore, thus saith the Lord: Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And thou, sh- and thou, they shall cry unto me. I will not hearken, hearken unto them. Mm. So you can look at this film as kind of like a, a self reckoning, mm-hmm. yeah. reckoning of your of your other self. Yeah, like you are your worst enemy, stuff like that. It's, it's very open ended. And th- yeah, and then it's, it also gets you thinking, like, who who are the good people and who are the bad people, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we even challenge that within our own, um, you know, society. It's like we we demoralize or demean people because they are different, but at the end of the day, you know, we are kind of one and the same. Yeah, there is um, more solidarity between the tethered than the, mm, the untethered. Yeah, and the one thing that got me too when they was like, "Who are you?" Like, we're we're American, mm-hmm. right? We we're. Yeah, that, that led me to my Americans versus Can- Canadians, like like <laughs> this all, off the wall thing, yeah. where you know Americans like tried to immigrate to Canada once Trump got elected, <laughs> and then and then Canadians were looking at us like, well, y'all elected them, y'all don't want them, like, you know, because <laughs> right. they're not living here, they don't really know what's what's going on. So, right. so I, I looked at that like that too, but whatever. But again, solid film. I highly recommend. Um, you know, I think it's one of those movies where you got to watch more than once. I think there's some things that you can kind of see from the second time around that you may have missed the first. And I got to go back. I'll go back maybe next week. You know, I'll just give myself some, some time to process it. Maybe. I'll see if my mom wants to see it. Maybe. You usually like to watch movies twice, right? Usually. I sometimes. do. But, I, you know, with this film, I feel I look at it as, like, maybe. Did you see Sorry to Bother You yet? Yeah, I know I saw Shana that. saw it. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like that movie, like, it was a very good one-time watch. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't really need to see it again. But if I could see it again, I could catch some other things that I missed. I will watch it all the way up until the end. Oh, the sorry to bother you. Yeah, or, yeah. Because if that, I if I were to watch it again, I will watch it all the way up until the, then I cut it off. Kind of like, um, I don't know if you guys ever. Uh, it was a Spike Lee film called She Hate Me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really if first it's too many movies in one. It's too mm-hmm. many plots in one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the end is just. All over the place, but up until that point, it's a very good film. Okay, I mean, it's for different reasons. Like for Sorry to Bother You, it's because that movie was like like really unsettling to me. It yeah. was done well, but it was a little unsettling. Uh, for for us, I feel like well, I kind of got it the first time. With Get Out, Get Out was kind of like funny to me too, so that's why yeah. I watched that more than once. But with us, I felt like eh, I might watch it again, but like you know. And I was looking at the audience reviews. Audience reviews a little bit lower, like what sixty five percent of the audience kind of. I know the audience. Everybody on Facebook is an expert. This yeah. movie means this, and yeah. y'all didn't catch it. So I'm, 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 I'm the greatest because I caught it. You I'm know what woke. I mean? <laughs> I'm woke. Y'all not woke. That is the issue. Like everybody's opinions are just so different. Like it's open to your interpretation. Seriously. Like you don't gotta just 
oh, you you didn't get it. Like, no, that's not the case. You just saw it a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I may see it one more time just just because it was some distractions in the audience. You know, some people were like walking around trying to find their seats. Mm-hmm. It messed up a couple. It messed up a few minutes in my my viewing time. But um, outside of that, again, I'm gonna say it's a solid movie. I definitely give it maybe eight out. Well. <sighs> On a scale of ten, I probably give it like a eight point five. Scale of ten, give us give it a solid eight. I give solid it a solid eight. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. That that's it. Why? Seven and a half. Thirteen year old. It it was a nice sophomore feature. I I'm, yeah. I'm I, I do want to see what he's going to do in the future in the future in the future of his filmmaking career. Only for that Twilight Zone, man. It's coming out soon. Now yeah. is that coming on TV or is this just on? It's gonna be on CBS. CBS All Access. It's not oh. gonna be on CBS the channel. Oh, all Access. Oh, that, that's what that. I'm saying. Like, is it gonna be on TV or is it just gonna be strictly online? Why? Why would they do that? It's to a us? subscription thing. Cause so they so they can get you to subscribe. Sick of you this. know what I'm this sick is, of spending man. Spending all his money. Disney gonna have a subscription channel too, where they're gonna try to put stuff on there only, like a Star Wars spinoff live action series, just to get people to subscribe. They about to ruin themselves, man. But like, Disney just based off of their whole catalog. Like you don't even have to advertise new content to me if you're yeah. gonna put all of your catalog on the app. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. pay for it. But again, who wants to pay? The devil is a lie, man. I got too many streaming Seriously. services. Seriously, and it's I'm, ten dollars each. Done. You know, you about to spend a hundred dollars for all these. Fr- yeah, it's just yeah. Too much. By the time you get all of your streaming services together, you might as well have, to have cable. Yeah. <laughs> I guess let's move on to the second half of our our, um, our episode. We're gonna talk about the history of black horror. History of black horror in film. As an expert. <laughs> In film, uh, how about you get us started with this conversation? Just start it off. So, how are we gonna do this? Are we just gonna like name off a movie, what we remember from that movie, what we think about it today, and just kind of go from there? Now, what is a black horror film? Right, does that be directed? So, produced? It could be directed. Starring. It could like star a black person. Um, it, the, the the villain itself could be black. Okay. You know, my first choice was Candyman. Mm-hmm. That's a classic, man. Legendary. Not a living dead. Oh my god, that's that creepy. Well. I would say Candyman, when I watched it as a, a kid, I was so creeped out. Like That was like yeah. one of the first horror movies I saw. It's a great concept, like you said. Um, Tony Todd, he played the hell out of that role, even for yes. the spinoff films, the mm-hmm. sequels. Yes. You know, that was that was a legendary villain. And um, I think that film, um, that was in the hood too, right? Mm-hmm. A yeah. little bit. Because yeah, Virginia Madsen went to the hood to like figure out the, like, the ri- origin of Candyman. Mm-hmm. Who was that directed by? I got to look it up right quick. But, it, but you know, black horror films, I feel like they're so few and far between, though. That's the issue. Yeah. They are. But those who, I mean, the ones I've seen in the past, um, you know, I enjoyed them. I think. Um, so it's directed by Bernard Rose, um, who's from uh, who's from London. It's based off a short story by Clive Barker, mm. who, who made Hellraiser. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that one, too. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, Candyman is a classic. I would say that's probably one of my favorite, at least growing up. Another one, Tales from, Tales from the Hood. That's a classic. Mm-hmm. It's a classic. I love that one. Um, Rusty Candif made that. He also made Sprung mm-hmm. with Tisha Campbell Martin. But mm-hmm. I love. Have y'all seen Fair the new Black Hat? Oh yeah. Have y'all seen the new Tales from the Hood? No. I don't want to. I've heard <laughs> horrible. I like Keith. <laughs> listen, I like Keith David, but I've heard bad things. It is horrible. My God, it was. Probably one of the worst Netflix. It was on Netflix. One of the worst movies I've seen, like remake. Is it? It was bad. They didn't produce it, but it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Oh. I love Keith David. <laughs> yeah, I love him too. I love mm-hmm. Keith David. He's Goliath and Gargoyles. Yes. Oh. Yes. I know that. But Which, t- they need a live action version of that. That would be <laughs> live action gargoyles. gargoyles. Tales from the Hood is like such a like um, a cornerstone because that movie is like referenced even in, in even like in hip hop. You know, yeah. like I know the game would reference that that film a lot in his uh, sample that film a lot in his music, and just the three different stories. I think there was one story that dealt with uh, like a like a racist cop that got mm-hmm. his comeuppance or like that got not his comeuppance but he got his just do in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that that was a very solid movie. Now you said Night of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. That Would that be a black horror film? Had a black lead? You could argue that because it had a black protagonist. You know, in the end, the black protagonist gets shot <laughs> <right? 'Cause Obviously. laughs> by by the cops, yeah. and he was the <laughs> one, <laughs> and he was the one that was saving everybody. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> well, because George Romero, I think he was making a point. He was like, "Look, this right. black protagonist was saving everybody, and in the end, he gets shot down just because of like old fashioned racism." You know what I mean? 
and then oh you know he was a zombie i thought he was a zombie you know what i mean so it's like a it's kind of like a cruel punchline in the end mm -hmm. so yeah you you could definitely argue night of the living dead mm. that kind of started the whole zombie thing didn't it for the mainstream yeah yeah well i know you brought a beloved how <laughs> See, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I, I know that when I was watching it as a kid, Dondi Newton was like cray-cray. Yeah. She, she, she was a little nuts in that movie. So would Ease by you also be considered? I would, because, you know, it is about kind of like gothic tales. So that's like gothic horror. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, not necessarily a monster thing. I know Diane Carroll played like a witch in that movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a very young Journey Smollett. Um... Samuel Jackson, Lynn Weefield has to deal with like curses and stuff like that. So I put Ease by you in that category. That was a very well done black horror film. Mm. I mean, I got a question. Do you think that the popularity of Jordan Peele is going to like sort of make ways for the new black horror enthusiasts to come in and, and produce like more? I mean, I hope. Like, how come that? How come you don't see a lot of a lot more black people in producing horror movies? I think they're out there. It's just that their scripts never got produced or never got signed off by a studio. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they, they do exist. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's just they probably just didn't get somebody to invest in them like Jordan got somebody to invest in him. And he had to establish a long career. Yeah. Like yeah. a long career. Yeah. Like he's been in the game for almost 20 years. That is true. He's been here for a while. So you, I say you, you do have to look at the behind the scenes of it all. So what makes a good horror movie from your point of view? What makes a good black horror film, or what makes a good horror movie in general? Let's see. Like, are there, like, um, that have you seen Blackula? I didn't see the the second one. I know mm -hmm. of it. I never watched it. You didn't. You didn't get into black exploitation. I did, but not the black exploitation horror films. Like okay. I watched like Coffee and Foxy Brown and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Cooley they, High. Because there's Blackula, and I think there's a sequel to Blackula. Then there's another black exploitation horror film. I think it's called Abby. I never saw it. Mm. Hmm. Pretty yeah. sure I probably heard but yeah, of it. I guess what makes a good black horror film in your mind? So obviously you establish the monster. You got to have a good monster. You know, mm -hmm. with us, we had the tether. With Get Out, you know, we had, um, you know, these, these people that were brainwashing you. Yeah. And then you kind of have like a little bit of social horror underneath. You know what I mean? With us, it's mm -hmm. open-ended. With Get Out, it's, you know, it's... It's racism. It's, you know, like the, the black person is the, the well-bred type of being. You know what right. I mean? Uh, with Candyman, it's, you know, like, um, well, I forgot about Candyman, like what it was like, what the social part of it was. But there was that kind of like other, like, urban area that the the white protagonist went to to figure out mm -hmm. the origin of Candyman. Mm -hmm. I feel like social horror is needed just as much as the physical other horror is needed. Mm -hmm. I agree. And to have a black lead make it to the end at some point, right? They always get killed out, get killed first, typically. No, but I think overall, man, I, and like going back in my, my memory of like black horror movies, I think it's about, first off, creating a situation where you you un see yourself in it. Like mm -hmm. you, you, the characters are familiar with you and kind of are come from a similar experience or background. That's always good because you can relate. And then something that allows us to I don't know, just like enjoy what what the essence of horror movies. So whether that be the jump scares or sort mm -hmm. of like the, the you know the psychological um, thrillers and manipulation, whatever that may be, but just solidly done. And I think that with Jordan Peele, you know, and his his you know his genius, because he I mean he is a genius in his own right. Um, he is. He's but, get, um I'm sorry. Go I don't know. I was about to say he's getting back to like the the, the basics. Like he's getting back to like what made horror films special. Yeah, but with Get Out, like, racism was a character. And with us, it wasn't. Like, it was just a family mm. that just so happened to be black in this situation. Hmm. Yeah. Whereas as Get Out was just, it was centered around race. Yeah, yeah, I think us is like, I think that's us is like, um, like, way of, um, uh, it's, it's his way of being universal in his interpretation. Mm -hmm. But I feel like yeah. that's kind of his flaw, too, because yeah. everything could be right as to what you interpret this film as. Mm -hmm. But I think Us also kind of alluded to aspects of race, right? Because think about when um, there were some racial undertones of, of what Elizabeth Moss and the, her husband were saying to him. Like, oh, you guys are, are late. You're always late. Right, stuff like that. Or <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. Or did you hear, like, the OJ reference? Like, oh, it's OJ's out, outside. Oh, yeah, OJ. Yeah. Right, stuff like that. So it was like... You know, some of the racial undertones, that was hilarious. right? Some of the <laughs> racial undertones still exist in a, in a different way. Like, 
when it was like, oh, uh, when she said, um, not Alexa, but whatever the system was, hey. like, call the police. They played, fuck the police. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't laugh at that. I thought that was silly, man. But I was like, all right, I give, I give Jordan a pass for that. That so, was kind of funny. So I guess it was less of a blatant observation of race and its impact and more so, like, what we kind of experience on a daily basis, like mm-hmm. that su- subconscious racism. And I think there was also a sense of, like, the black couple couple always trying to uh, validate themselves compared to their, their, their counterparts and feeling like they don't, or at least gay, feeling like he doesn't quite fit or qu- doesn't quite belong within that social setting. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, I think that that's, that kind of hinted towards that as well. But I I want to, like, was she just out of it when they went to the beach? Or was that how she always, was that always her relationship with Elizabeth Moss's character? Because I, she didn't engage her. I just think, I think going back to the beach, she just, I mean, she said it herself, back didn't it? She said, yeah, she said right. yeah, I don't I don't really carry on conversation. And Elizabeth Moffs is trying to be friendly. Like, oh, I get it. I totally get it. You know, I mean, I've, I've ran into situations like that where people like are like not like talking. I'm talkative, and I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. You know, I I kind of feel like that's what she was. Yeah, I mean. But if it's somebody that you've encountered already, like you right. know them. I think it was more so she didn't want to be there. At, at the beach. Yeah, I think that was it. And also when she said, I don't really talk, that's because obviously – she didn't talk when she was tethered, right? <laughs> yeah, and the beach gives her bad memories, too. Right. Because that's when she first came into the world. Um, what did y'all think about Bones? Terrible. Uh, uh, the last uh, time I saw Bones might have been 2001. For real. Or two. Yeah, me too. I was, I was young like when I saw one, that movie. One and done. It that's had not, good intentions. That's not. It a, just wasn't well executed. Because wasn't he like, um, you know, like a, like, you know, like a savior. Mm. Um, and then, you know, something happens, and then... 70s gangster seeking revenge for his death. Yeah. Mm. Like, that's not bad on paper, putting Snoop Dogg as a horror villain. But I feel like... Because <laughs> yeah. people Kenny. Snoop Dogg, right. Yeah, but the way it came out, like, I know I was anticipating it as a kid, but I watched it. I was like, oh, that was a funny movie. But yeah. it wasn't... It, was it wasn't a, supposed, it to, supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be funny, it, you know what I mean? But it's Snoop Dogg, like... It's, it's going to be funny. Yeah, Snoop Dogg is like, he's not supposed to be funny in Baby Boy, but he's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I know Eric LaSalle from ER made a film called Crazy as Hell where he was like a mental patient who claimed to be Satan. That was a pretty good movie. I don't I remember that I've movie. I've never seen that one. I've never seen it. That's a good one, Crazy as Hell. One, though, I, I guess I don't know if we would class, classify it as black, but The Purge election year. Well, no, you mean the first day, right? Or the, the first, first year? Purge. The first purge. The first purge, but they, yeah. all, But all Whichever the purges one. have, like, central black characters. Yeah, they do. But I know the one where they t- it took place in the housing project, that was the one that's kind of like... The first purge. The first purge, yeah. You could argue that. Yeah, that's a black horror film. Like a super nigga. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> hey, he was just, like, killing everybody. Like, it was crazy. So, I would, yeah, I would consider that one one because he was the, the black lead, you know, centered around a black community. You know, so I guess I would give it the the nod for, you know, for a black themed or central um, horror film. Okay, yeah, that that could count. I didn't see it, but I heard good things about it. Mm. Now I know that there are some movies where like Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror that are like <laughs> like bad. You know, like y'all y'all horror. ever saw that one? No, that was a straight to DVD one. I remember I remember my mom renting that one. I mean, it what? was more funny than scary, you know, because it's, it's Snoop Dogg's <laughs> horror, Hood of Horror. You know, it was funny. It was nuanced, but it wasn't, like, scary. So was it supposed to be, like, Sales from the Hood? Yeah, kind of like that. It uh, was exactly like that, but, like, less less nuanced, I guess. Uh, anything Snoop Dogg is in, like, trying to be serious, nah, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. I, I never saw this movie all the way, but uh, Leprechaun 2. Leprechaun in the Hood? Uh, leprechaun yeah, in the Leprechaun in the, the Hood. That's not a black <laughs> horror not, film. It's not. <laughs> and that movie was... Looking terrible. Like, uh, the hood come to do no good. <laughs> some people, some people stand by that. Smoking movie. weed. Oh, like, it was just it was so stereotypical. Ca- right. right, right. Nah, yeah, I don't know if I would consider that one. That's just horrible. Oh, how do we forget this vampire in Brooklyn? Is that a horror movie? It's supposed to be. You know, yeah. it's Eddie Murphy as a vampire. You know, stalking uh, Angela Bassett. Yeah, uh, it's a horror comedy. I, th- I think it does its job. I like that movie. That movie's pretty yeah. solid as a horror a comedy. One. I guess, yeah, horror comedy. I wouldn't call it just a, a horror, but... I think he directed that. Didn't, didn't Eddie Murphy direct that movie? I have. I don't know. Let me look that up. See, Eddie Murphy got talent. He's talented. People don't he give is. him credit. He is. But I, I, don't, I don't know if 
about that one. Wes Craven directed it, of all people. Wes Craven, yeah. So, would that be, yeah. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't, I got, I got to see it again. I remember watching it, like, maybe five or six years ago. Mm-hmm, yeah. It must have been on, like, Netflix or something, something like that. Um, I got to rewatch it. It was a one and done for me, and I saw it, like, when it first came out. So I wouldn't I wouldn't classify this as black horror, but because there is a black lead, it is like we could we can we can put it in like Fallen with Denzel Washington. Y'all remember that one? He's a detective. He's sunning down demons. Um, I don't remember that. There was a guy that he had arrested that was like executed on death row, but then he came back as a demon like in other people's mm-hmm. bodies. John what? Goodman was in it too. I don't I do not remember that at all. It's a solid that. film, man. It's the '90s Denzel, so you know. Fallen. Yeah. It's not on some type of vehicle. Nah, I don't. I don't remember seeing that one. Yeah, I don't remember seeing that one either. I may have seen. I just don't remember it. Could y'all imagine Spike Lee making a horror movie? He did. He did. Which one? Uh, the Sweet Blood of Jesus. It's a that recent one. Wasn't, one. I guess. I mean, it was about vampires, so it's gothic yeah. horror. I guess you could say. I mean, yeah, I remember seeing that one. It, yeah. I won't call it horror. It wasn't his best, but I mean, it it it, it was solid. So basically, when we. I think one thing we can't come across here, can't come can't come away with here is that there's not many black horror films. Uh-huh. It's not, right? That's not, or many good ones. <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, we have seen a reemergence since Jordan Peele. You know, we got the film starring Octavia Spencer called Ma. I don't know how oh, that's going to be, but I'm excited. I'm excited for that one too. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because I've never seen Octavia Spencer in that type of role. So I'm like, but yeah. he called it though. He was like, I want to see her. I want to see her as a psychopath, and, right. this, and I'm seeing her, and I'm I'm gonna go see it. I got to, like, I just, I, it's gonna be hard to take her serious though in that role. Is it? I just think of her always like the the docile, sweet like grandma or, or mother. Yeah, this could be the breakout thing for her to, to do something other. It was, I mean, the help was the breakout thing, but this could be her doing something different than what she's usually done. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, we do need more black horror films out there. I think Ease by You, uh, that was supposed to be the um, the starting point of the emergence for black horror films. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, Hollywood didn't catch up to that film. So now we got Jordan Peele to kind of bring us back to where we should be. Yeah, we need to get some more uh, some more black minds out there. For real. I'm sort of the talent. The talent's there. Like you yeah, said, it's got to be cultivated. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think, you know, overall with this whole the Us movie, um, I think that this was a great way for me to at least see a different side of Jordan Peele in, in terms of what he can bring to the table, just a different perspective. Um, obviously, Get Out in its own right is probably like a, a classic that's going to go down as like, phew, at least in my top 15, uh-huh. top 10, top 15. Yeah, Get Out is uh, the, like the like the traditional classic. This is like a cult favorite. Yeah, uh, Us will probably be in my top 50, i say that. Uh-huh. When is it? Well, 25. What, what, what would you rank it? I got to give it a second watch before I give it all that. Yeah, but, uh, like before I rank it. Yeah, I got to give it a second watch. You wouldn't put it in your top 25, top 50? Of like what? Just like films in general, like no. you're saying. No, no. No? No. I got to give it a second watch before I give it that. But our first impressions, nah. Man. Right now, I give it a good one-time watch. But when I see it again, I'll let you know. Hey, we got to rank some movies, man. We got to do that for the next episode. Just like our top 50 movies. Of all time. No, we can do top twenty five of all time. Top twenty five is fair. Twenty five is fair. But we gotta figure we gotta figure out genre though. Because unless we just do like general, like anything. And it's favorites. You don't have to favorites? Be good. Yeah, like favorites. Okay. All right, so it doesn't have to be like the well known blockbusters, just it something. It doesn't have that to we... be Citizen Kane. Like Citizen oh, yeah. Kane doesn't have to be on your list. It has to be your favorite. I was just Even watching. though Citizen Kane is dope. And yeah. it is one of my favorites, but you ain't gotta be like me. So I was just watching uh Silence of the Lamb. Prior to coming here, man, that's such a good movie. Yeah, yeah. legit. So I guess stay tuned. Uh, I guess I guess with next episode, we're talking about favorite movies. Then top twenty five. Top twenty five. All right, we, we'll all just start top twenty five. All, right. all right. So anything else? Any final thoughts about this? Final thoughts, y'all. Um, if you haven't, well, I hope you have seen the movie. If you listen, to the you listen by now. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I hope we didn't like it. stir you away. It's <laughs> right. a solid movie. It's a solid movie. But um, I. This, but like this whole episode of us like scrambling trying to find like black horror films, it did just highlight the the gap that needs to be filled in, as far as that genre of entertainment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. We gotta, um, I mean, too often we just like use one voice as kind of the token. You was for a while, Spike Lee, you know, 
Right now, it's kind of Jordan Peele, so we need to sort of expand that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. This has been a great episode. Can we talk? Like, share, give reviews, feedback, you know, all that good stuff. Thank you.